Hey, everyone, and welcome to the finalist voting for the Maven Northwind Challenge. We've got an exciting panel today in John, Stacy, Lauren, and Bronislav. Thanks for joining us, guys. And we've got an even more exciting discussion in store. So let's kick things off by reviewing the challenge objective, which is what we'll use as the criteria for the voting. So if we scroll down here, you'll see that for the Maven Northwind Challenge, you'll be working as a BI developer for Northwind Traders, which is a global import and export company that specializes in supplying high quality gourmet food products to restaurants, cafes, and specialty food retailers around the world. So as part of your role, you've been tasked with building a top level KPI dashboard for the executive team. So its purpose should be to allow them to quickly understand the company's performance in key areas, including sales trends, product performance, key customers, and shipping costs. So this is what we'll be looking for as we evaluate these entries. And if you look at the data set here, you'll see that we're working with Microsoft's Northwind Traders data, which contains sales and order data for that fictitious gourmet food supplier. And if we scroll even further down, you'll see that we have the almost 300 entries to the challenge. Now, if you participated and you don't see your entry here, then make sure that you go to your project settings and in this Maven challenge tab here, just make sure that you select the appropriate challenge. In this case, it was the Maven Northwind challenge. Now we've already got a list of the five finalists that we're going to be evaluating today, but I'd also like to call out some honorable mentions. So first up, we have David Rasala, who had some of the best use cases for KPI cards that we saw. And you can quickly see those right here. We also have Adolfo Hernandez, who had a similar approach, but actually took it one step further, because if you click into any one of these top KPI cards, then that actually filters and drills down into the report so you can see more details. Now, Cornelius Idoko had a ton of useful insights that he packed into his dashboard, and he actually broke those down into the areas of interest and then provided some recommendations after that. And finally, Maximiliano Lafos showcased some really solid design skills and kept the focus on just a handful of relevant metrics for the executives, again, in the sales, products, key customers, and the shipping costs. So those are the honorable mentions for the Maven Northland Challenge. Now let's dig in to the five finalists, starting with Kurt McDonald. So it's my pleasure to do a talk through of Kurt's submission. And I actually want to begin by scrolling down and talking about the about section that Kurt's included for the project. And in particular, this text that's highlighted here is what I really appreciate is Kurt begins by outlining an important thought process that has helped inform the rest of the dashboard. First, identifying who this dashboard is for and based on that, how they would want to interact with it. So I won't go through and read all of it, but you might want to go back and take a look. But key things Kurt identified is that based on past experience creating dashboards for an executive level, the ask is often for a single page report. And that means not a lot of extra clicking or drill throughs or slicers. And so the way this is written, and then that direct connection to how we see it in the final product, it feels like this thought process happened very early in Kurt's development process. So a strong connection here to a foundational principle we talk about in the data analyst workflow about beginning with envisioning the end user and what they need. So really great stuff here. So moving up to the dashboard, I actually have an expanded copy for us to look at. I think what we can see here is that thought process Kurt used has translated into a very clean design aesthetic. Along the left-hand side, we have a panel that has year-to-date values reported for some really high-level KPI metrics. And the remainder of the space is equally divided into four quadrants. And each one of those is assigned to one of the four key performance areas that were asked for in the prompt. So things that are working really well for me here in this example is first, the choice to simplify within each of these panels. And I know it's a really hard choice, whether it's just editing down to a few key uh, indicators, or as Kurt has done here, trying to select one visual in each quadrant. 
But I just wanted to acknowledge and appreciate that like in striving for that, it's striving for that at a glance pulse for what's happening at Northwind Traders. The second thing that's working really well for me here is the use of descriptive titles to provide context. Now in three out of four of the quadrants, we have either a full sentence or some type of comparator that helps the viewer understand what they're seeing in the visual and helps make sure that we're taking away that key message that is trying to be communicated. And so these things combine really well for me in this visual here in the upper left quadrant where Kurt is talking about current year sales trends. What I like is that it's really easy for me to, at a glance, compare the current month which is what, with what has happened in the previous month or what happened in the last year. And when I mouse over, I get this great little tooltip that gives me that additional information down to the dollar and, again, that context of how much of a percent increase. So really great stuff here. Now, moving over to the shipping costs one, I think there are a few things here that might help support me as a viewer to really get to the gold that's in this visual. First of all, it was a little bit hard for me to immediately understand what was the difference that was trying to be communicated in the appearance of each of these bubbles. But I went down into the about section and Kurt was able to explain that the larger the bubble, the higher the average shipping cost per unit. And actually, if I follow the instruction to use the tool tip and mouse over top of it, I get this great information about where cost and quantity are subdivided by shipping type. So this is a really great insight and seems to have an awesome actionable path forward. So for example, for this one, for Ireland, could we switch over more of our shipments to Speedy Express or maybe all of them to reduce costs? So I really like where this is going in terms of driving improvement, but I think some refinement in the visual here would help reduce the risk of this being missed by someone who's having that at a glance review. The other thing I thought about was maybe being a little bit cautious in your selection of icons about using ones that have some kind of indicators with arrows or check marks. Now, it's a little bit, I think, that I'm getting used to having things update dynamically. So if those arrows are indicating an upward trend, but currently we don't have it, it could be out of sync. So these ones all match right now, but keep in mind that there could be a bit of a disconnect there. And usually, I'm always for saying if you put in an acronym to make sure that you spell out what it means. Uh, I had to look this one up. IFOT means delivery in full on time. But actually, I think in this case, for an executive level summary, this is exactly the type of shorthand that they're looking for. And they're used to seeing this kind of acronym and wouldn't want all that text. So it's almost like the exception that proves the rule for me. So overall, a really strong submission here, Kurt. And thanks for letting me give a talk through of your great work. All right, great. Yeah, so I'll talk about Alexander. Um, some of the things that I loved here, I'll start off with. And the first one being, I really liked this project write-up. I think what it does a really good job of is explaining the business context and the questions that we're going to be getting into. So I think this was really fantastic. Another thing that was pretty good about just the overall approach is doing everything quarterly. So it kind of smoothed the trends out. Um, other folks kind of got maybe a little too into the weeds uh, by not taking the quarterly approach. So I really liked that decision. I think it helped a lot. Another thing that's really cool here, I'll show you guys some of the um, interactive nature of this thing. So you can see, for example, this chart here, the cumulative sales, and we can look at the forecast for uh, what we had forecasted at the beginning of the year, the current forecast based on the run rate. We can put on, um, this is, uh, I think that's this, uh, time last year and then the, um, the previous quarter. So the, it was kind of nice to have the ability to, to keep some of those without kind of cluttering it. If you just wanted to make certain comparisons. And then over here, we've got a pretty cool little interactive component where you can quickly see sales by country. You can look at your customers. You can, um, look at the products that drove sales here. You can look at which employees were, um, 
were driving the most sales. And then you could break down the costs for freight too. So there were a lot of pretty cool things you could do in terms of making this an interactive tool. I think if I were to give this a constructive criticism, I'd say it probably falls a little short of what I think Kurt did such a good job on, which was making this like a one sheeter that has all the information on it in one spot. So that's, it's really a true executive snapshot. Uh, this one kind of felt a little more like a tool to, um, to dive into, to slice and dice like an analyst might use, or, you know, somebody who wants to be playing with the data might use, but overall, I thought this was a really good execution, great entry, Alexander, um, Good luck with the uh, the final voting round. Okay, so I'm happy to talk through another one of Gerard's finalist entries. Uh, we keep seeing his name over and over again, but there is a very good reason for all of that. Uh, as usual, he's about to uh, about this project section uh, is very well built. It's really long. It's really detailed. There is no possible way we can go through all of this, but I do want to. Uh, I do want to point out two things. So this philosophy and approach piece, uh, it's very important because here is what, where he sets the sets the scope of what he's going to do. So uh, he focuses on two, two, 2015 only, uh, and he explains it by way of putting weight on the more recent period, which actually, if you think about it, is a really real world scenario. So we have a couple of years of data here. If we were executives who need to make decisions that it makes sense that we we will make those decisions based on more recent trends than let's say a more historical data. Uh, another piece is he actually enriched the data by setting some sort of targets. Uh, original data didn't have this. We've seen this in a number of other entries. But he did it also, and I think it's a really smart thing to do, really, really good emulation of a real world scenario where I don't really know a company that operates without some sort of a budget or some sort of a target on whatever yearly, quarterly uh, level or whichever granularity. So really cool stuff here. Gerard, I invite everybody to read this. He shares a lot. He is a leader in the community. There's actually a link to his post here where he goes into a little bit more detail from the technical side on how he built all of this. And let's actually dig in. I also have another window open, which maximizes the view. So in the spirit of true executive dashboard, we have we are hitting the head with these API cards, which show us at a glance the health of our business. Uh, not only that, we have a ton of additional information that makes it easy to really understand these numbers. So yeah, we have a revenue of 123, 124, 124,000, but we also know now that it's 18% above the last month. We have the information against the running month, against the target, sorry, uh, the running year. A lot of details were packed into, into this one card. And that's something actually that we repeat quite often to our students as well. It's not just about having a big number out there. It's about giving context to that number. The same goes for, for the rest of these cards. Uh, obviously, it's a very good looking report. And it may be it might be easy to fall into a trap thinking that, yeah, OK, Gerard is a very talented designer and his reports always look so great. But there is another, I would call it maybe a signature move that Gerard has that is always present in his work. And those are the small details that would maybe be very easy to miss, but if they weren't there, they would be missing a lot. So let's, for example, he, he gives us the targets here very discreetly, even more discreetly, there is this key line here in which he simply quotes what a certain acronym means. Now imagine a scenario like this. Let's say that that row doesn't exist. It's still a beautiful report, right? It still looks the same. You wouldn't even notice that it's missing. But now you have to all of a sudden think what all of those acronyms mean and spend a ton of time trying to decipher what those numbers are. Just one line missing. 
and everything else remains the same. And those kinds of details, I have another example, actually. You have here probably the most discrete line of them all, hover for tooltip on reading visuals. If I hover over here, I actually get an instruction on, on how to read uh, each one of these uh, charts. And these are the details that all the design aside, that's what adds a ton of value. And that's what Gerard does consistently over and over again. You could argue about some of the execution choices and I'm going to in a minute, but these details are ever present. I would actually call them his signature move. Another very cool detail that falls under the same bucket. Uh, let's say if you notice these KPR cards, KPI cards, sorry, they're all time series analysis. So we have January, February, March, but here he starts with line charts and then switches to bar charts. So why? Uh, line charts here make sense only because of the, because of the target revenue. We don't have any data values, data points. We don't have any axes with any kind of scale. So if you remove the target line, then the whole thing is useless. But moving over to the customers and products, because these are more granular and they don't have a target of their own, now the line chart doesn't make any sense at all. So he switches to bar charts because he wants to show the relative difference across time. Granted, he could have used the line chart, but then it, he would have to have some sort of an axis or something to complete that picture uh, where, where he, he's showing this, this data. So these kind of tips and tricks are always in his work if you if you look close enough. Uh, my one problem, actually my two problems here are the expansion in the bottom part of, of his report. Uh, in his defense, he does sh share that he wanted to test out some new visuals. So he was playing with some new tools and it's an educational thing. I congratulate it. However, I think these are a little bit more complex just from the fact that this should be an executive dashboard i don't think that we should really have a tooltip that has to teach us how to read it if i'm sitting as an executive across the room and viewing this on a huge screen then i may not have the opportunity to 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 look into the how to read the the, the visual uh, that's one thing another thing is he switches the styles so as we move through the kpis we have to obviously change our mindset because different KPIs are interpreted differently, right? So if I then have to figure out every time a new chart type for a new KPI, it can get confusing. Uh, he does a great job. I mean, the tooltips are great. And when you spend some time to figure these out, they, they complete the work, they do the work, they work just fine. I just think that this second part of his report could benefit from a having a standard standardized type of a visual which the, the numbers support and i think that this is possible other than that it's it's really it's really just just a brilliant entry all right so i am really excited to be able to talk about maria line's entry to this challenge um she is another very well-known contestant very well-known name within our maven community and she's here with a really great entry um, so I'm really kind of pumped to go through it. Uh, starting with this about this project section, I think that Marjolein did something really smart here and she really used this about in a smart way. She kind of touched on exactly what she wanted to do in terms of building her dashboard. She went through the purposes for it um, and kind of called out exactly why she was making the choices she wanted to make. So for instance, she said that she was only focusing on the last completed month, which was April of 2015. Um, so really looking at that as her her focus for this dashboard. And she kind of talked a lot about how, you know, this was meant to be for executives at the company, and she wanted to make sure that it was appropriate for that use. Um, I also really loved that, you know, in her about section, she sort of talked about how if this was used in a real world day to day kind of scenario, this is how she might change it. Um, in addition to that, she kind of walked us through exactly what she did in terms of data manipulation, which I really appreciated. She added a couple of columns to her orders table specifically to talk about if an order was either ordered too late or shipped too late so that she was able to use that in her visuals later. 
Um, and then she also sort of talked about her actual analysis, why she chose the KPIs that she did, um, and just, you know, how she went about using the information she had. She also gave us this really great image. So in the actual embedded dashboard, the um, Azure map is not supported. So she kind of wanted to give us the insight into this is what this would look like in the dashboard if that embed had worked. Um, but I liked the fact that she kind of called this out and she gave us an idea of what the use for this uh, map would be and how she would plan on kind of having that um, as an additional you know thing that people could use to look at. And then kind of going into the actual dashboard, which I too have in a different screen, um, I think that this visualization did exactly what we asked for in terms of the challenge. We, at one glance, very quickly see exactly what the company's performance is in terms of sales, the discounts, the freight um, charges, the number of orders, and then the number of orders or the percent of orders that were shipped too late. Um, I like that the five KPIs that she focused on, these five here, were obviously very clearly laid out. But on top of that, I also really appreciated the fact that, again, at one glance, you very quickly see, okay, the net sales number is a positive. It's green. It's positive. Um, you know, the freight number is in red. That indicates that it is it is not going in the way we'd like to see it going. So that use of color, I felt like was really great and just kind of like what uh, Bronislav was talking about. If this is across the room and in a, in a, on a big board, somebody's going to look at that and know exactly what those two numbers mean and how they are compared um, to, you know, if it was good or if it could be better. I also really like that even without, you know, scrolling over this dashboard at all, I can see very quickly the top three companies and the top three products for a year to date. I thought that was a really great kind of call out just to give us an idea of what was going on um, year to date. And then, you know, I thought that being able to compare not only the April of 2014 to April of 2015, which last year versus this year, but also the year to date so far compared to year to date of last year. Um, you know, I think that there are maybe a couple of things that I would let look at doing a little bit differently. I do think that having the the colors was enough for me to kind of indicate if a number was was good or bad. Um, I don't know that I needed those check marks and exclamation points. I kind of think that it it added a little bit of chaos. It didn't necessarily need to be on the dashboard. Um, and then again, I also I as I roll over these the tool tips, um, I like the fact that you get a little bit more insight into the top five companies and products of the month. Um, and then also, you know, the the comparison between March of last year, March of this year. Um, I will say that this in the ship too late kind of threw me off a little bit just because I assume that the February of this year did not have any orders that were shipped too late. And so this gap in the line threw me a little bit. Um, and then the other thing that I really, you know, nitpicking at this point really is this, the bar charts are labeled as top five, but obviously in the situation, there's not a top five. Um, so maybe thinking about like updating that to be dynamic would be something that you could add at some point in the future. Um, and then, you know, I do want to mention that Marioline did a couple of other um, kind of drill down analyses. And I imagine that these would kind of be used more for like VPs or managers who needed a little bit more insight into specific details. Um, but with that not necessarily being the the prompt, I chose not to really focus a lot of time in that area. Um, I do think it was really nice to have that additional detail if needed. So overall, I really liked Marioline's entry. I thought that the simplicity of those five, you know, these five rectangles was a really great way to go about it. Um, it really kind of reflects what a real business's dashboard might look like. And I know that she put a lot of thought into that design. Um, she kind of touched on that in her about section. So I think that the five KPIs she used really told a comprehensive story. Her tooltips gave us a lot of insight into not only the past months, but also the year over year comparison. And I really think that this dashboard did exactly what we were asking for by showcasing those KPIs at a really high levels that again, executives could easily look at. But it's also sneakily very thorough and detailed, which I really liked. So this was an awesome entry module line, and I'm really happy that I got a chance to kind of go through it. All right. So I know I say this a lot, 
during these calls, but this project from Tiffany has really grown on me this last few days. And here's why. I think bottom line, if I was the executive, this is probably the dashboard that I would pick out of all of them to get started. And I do say get started on purpose because that's the key differentiator for me. If you read Tiffany's about this project section here, and I had something selected like Stacy, but it deselected, doesn't matter. You'll notice that she very deliberately built this with the intention of showing it as a demo to the end user. You can see it here actually. And then being able to accommodate any suggestions or modifications very easily on top of it because of how she built and designed the dashboard. And that just really resonated with me because it's exactly what deploying a dashboard is like in real life. It's all about the iteration. But the key, of course, is a good foundation. And I think that she does have that here. We've got the four main areas that we want to focus on. So we've got sales, shipping, customers, and products. And you can immediately just see how they're each trending. So as an executive, in a second, you know, are we going in the right direction or are we not? Is there anything else that I need to do? One thing that I will say is a bit misleading is that shipping trending upwards isn't something you want. And at first glance, you might think that all of these metrics are good. To her you know, advantage, she does have trend direction increasing. And then the tooltip says that decreasing is better. One of my first kind of adjustments I'd make is probably to use color and maybe the trend line to indicate whether the trend direction is good or bad. And then we can kind of save some space here. But that's kind of what's cool to me about it is that I immediately have some thoughts about the changes that I'd like to make. So I'd replace, you know, the trend direction, I'd replace, you know, the totals here with something bigger and for the current month. And then maybe we could get rid of the highest and lowest because she's got those called out inside the line charts themselves. And what kind of just made this so cool for me is that all of a sudden what would normally be my negative critique of the dashboard has actually turned into a concrete list of next steps to improve it. Granted, the same can be said for any dashboard, but this was just so deliberate in its design and it works so naturally that I kind of just love it. So again, I think for me, this is the best starting point. Maybe not exactly what we were looking for in the challenge. Maybe we want anything that's closest to the finished product. But I think if I were the executive, this is the one I'd pick. And I think with a few iterations, this would be working perfectly with the purpose that I intended for it to have. So for anyone that wants to see a good example of how to begin to tailor a dashboard specifically to their end user, I'd really suggest taking a closer look at Tiffany's and especially reading her about this project section in which she kind of walks through what she was thinking as she took these decisions. But that's all the finalists. Now, before we move on to the selection process, I just want to quickly recap the challenge prompt and criteria. So again, we're looking for the best top level KPI dashboard built specifically for executives, and we're judging it in terms of a complete project. So every element in the project page takes a part. We're not just looking at the dashboard. So having said that, does anyone have any strong initial preferences? I have to say that uh, Tiffany was one of my favorites too, uh, apart from the I would call it a lack in maybe emphasizing certain values. But I actually almost skipped the part where she mentioned that this is a, an initial work, which makes this an even stronger case. Uh, I just like the fact that uh, it's so clear and it's so easy to understand the health of the business from it. I don't even agree with a shipping being a negative thing if it if it goes up uh one of the things shipping could be going up simply because we are selling more stuff and therefore we have to pay for more freight uh so it's not necessarily one one recommendation there would be to somehow normalize either by cost per unit or whatever other measure that makes it an apples to apples comparison and then we can see uh if the freight is really going up or not uh other than that my only only beef with it was that i i had hoped for some sort of emphasis on some key values as it is is a little bit difficult to read through all of that and and just select what is the most important piece to, to look at but apart from that it's a one pager it's it's just i would even 
get rid of the the the, the slicers on the on the left hand side. It's so simple. You have the tooltips. You absolutely don't have to use it. Use them. Uh, it it just works as it is. Uh, so I know it's, for me, it's it is one of my favorites. I I I, I would I would endorse it. And just to be fair, this is shipping cost per order. So she did normalize in the trending upward. Ah, okay, it would mean that we're spending more. Granted, maybe okay. the orders are bigger. And she actually mentions that as well in that there's, yep. So per order instead of total shipping for that same reason that you mentioned. And awesome. they also That's even have better. a proportion of shipping cost per order as a backup um, in case that's what the executives would prefer. So again, a lot of thought behind every kind of decision here. But that's enough about me and, and, and Tiffany. I'm curious to hear uh, any other thoughts from you guys on some of the other entries. I'd throw Kurt's name in the ring as a really solid uh, executive over you. I think I think that was a great one. And then I I think it's Gerard's looked pretty fantastic too. It's kind of hard to hard to not include that one. Those those would be the ones that I would advocate for. I would also reinforce Gerard once again. He apart from my personal thoughts on on the execution of the second part, if I were to cut the, this dashboard in half, those KPIs are just so strong uh, in, in and of themselves. So yeah, definitely support there. I do think that Tiffany's really kind of did what we were asking in terms of just like, especially kind of calling out the fact that this is, you know, maybe a V1 of what this might look like. Um, I think that it, it is a really strong contender. It shows all of the KPIs that that an executive might be interested in seeing. Um, so I, I definitely think that like the simplicity of this is a huge bonus for me. Great. How about you, Stacey? Yeah, I agree with that as well. And the one thing that keeps coming to mind is seeing what John had presented for Alexander's with some of those comparator lines. I almost wish that we could have some of those included in some of those other trend lines, because what I really appreciated about this is being able to see pace and target, which I think is one of those key things that we're looking for. So uh, I don't know if we could mix them all up with a magic wand, but that's definitely one component that I wanted to highlight because it's unique, but really does answer that question about how are we doing, so. Yeah, so I'm just gauging the room here. I'm kind of getting a feeling that maybe we have Kurt, Gerard, and maybe Tiffany as the kind of three that we're going to vote on, if that works for everyone. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. I, Enrique knows this, we were chatting about this earlier. Alexander was actually my my first pick originally. Uh, I just loved the interactivity of it. But then it came to me that actually that's part of the problem because it's really, you have, you have to, you have to dig into it. You have to interact with the dashboard in order, in order for it to have sense. And one piece there is that whatever you do to this dashboard, you cannot ever have all of the KPIs visible at once. So it's missing that key piece, which is like the business at a glance. The health of the business at a glance. That's that's what finally uh, struck me as as probably the deal breaker for me personally. Yeah. All right. So I think that we can vote Kurt being one, Gerard being two, and Tiffany being three. So if everyone's ready. We'll just do it on the count of three. All right. Yeah. One, two, three. And I think Tiffany takes it four to one. Wow. Congratulations, Tiffany. Nice. Let's give her a round of applause. Nice work. Congrats, Tiffany. <laughs> All right. So as a prize, Tiffany, you'll be taking home a free annual membership to Maven Analytics for yourself and another one for you to give away. So to anyone you'd like. So congratulations once again. And that's it for this challenge. Thanks again to everyone that continues to participate. Got a lot more in store for you guys. So stay tuned. And thanks, everyone.